it is Miss Kepley, and today we're going to continue with the grammar series, and we're going to look at correcting run-on sentences. Now, before we get started, if you need extra practice on these, there is a link below where you can download the activities that go with this mini lesson. But if you're just here for the mini lesson or your teacher has already provided you with the practice activities, great. Let's get started. So what is a run-on sentence? Some people call them fused sentences, but mostly we hear them called as run-on sentences in middle school or high school. And it's two or more sentences combined without correct punctuation or without any punctuation. Y'all, I see you over there just writing words down without punctuation and turning it in as a paragraph. Drives me crazy. All right, so that's all we're here today. We're gonna look at run-on sentences and we will find them and eliminate them. We're gonna take them away. Here we go. So before we get started, we need to look at some pregame stuff. Let's review independent clause. It's a clause that can stand on its own since it expresses a complete thought. It can be considered a sentence by itself. Here's an example. Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online. I'm sure some of you are the same way. But step one, we need to look for the subject and the verb. Well, if you're like, what is that? Don't worry, I got you. A subject is who or what is doing the action in the sentence, and the verb is just the action the subject is doing. So what's the action here? Spending hours practicing short dances. Who's doing it? Alexis, subject, verb, therefore friends, you have to ask yourself, would this make sense by itself? Yes, yes, this would make sense as a sentence. We don't need any more information. There we go, perfect sentence, subject, verb, it makes sense all as well. That's an independent clause. So what happens is people put independent clauses together without a comma or without some of the other fixes that we have here for you or without a period. And so we are going to practice finding these independent clauses and how to change them so they're no longer run on sentences. All right, fix number one. You're gonna add a period to make separate sentences. And not just random periods, y'all. We're gonna add them strategically. So let's look. Oh, Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online. She only records herself when she thinks they are perfect. Well, this would be a great example of something one of my students would turn in. But there are two independent clauses here. So step one, we need, when we're reviewing our writing, we need to see if we have independent clauses smushed up together without punctuation. So let's look for our independent clauses here. There's one we've already determined that. She only records herself when she thinks they're perfect. Yes, she is our subject, records herself, is our verb. So there's another independent clause. So step two, super simple, y'all. Put a period in between the independent clauses. Periods aren't bad. There they are. Yay, it looks so good. So now we have Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online, period. She only records herself when she thinks they are perfect. But here's a little tip. Make sure to capitalize the first letter in your shiny new sentence. Okay, so that was one fix. Let's look at another option for you. Now these are all options and you can choose which one works best. You can add a comma and a conjunction to join the independent clauses. All right, so we have the same two and run on, I mean, the same independent clauses here. Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online. She only records herself when she thinks they are perfect. So again, we're looking for the independent clauses. We know there's one and there's another one. So step two, you put a comma and a relevant conjunction in between the independent clauses. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, what is a conjunction? Don't worry, I got you. Here we go. Conjunction are these seven words, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. We call them fanboys. It's the way to remember them. But anyway, 
So you add a comma and a conjunction between these independent clauses. Let's see. What conjunction do you think would fit best? I think so too, and works perfectly here. Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online, and she only records herself when she thinks they are perfect. I kind of like this better than the period. What do you think? But make sure, tip, here's a pro tip. You always put that comma before the conjunction. If you don't put the comma before the conjunction, when you're joining these two sentences together, it is wrong. All right, fix number three, option number three. Get ready for some fancy language arts words. Woo, you're gonna add a subordinate conjunction to change one of the independent clauses into a dependent clause. That's a lot of fancy language arts words. Don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. We have our same run on sentence here. Step one is still the same. We're looking for those independent clauses. We know where they are. Step two, add a subordinating conjunction at the beginning of one of the independent clauses. Now, if you're like, Miss Kepley, I just learned <laughs> what conjunctions are. What are subordinating conjunctions? Subordinating conjunction, there's a lot of them, so I'm not gonna list them and you can Google them, but their common ones are if, since, even though, although, because, those are ones I use a lot, therefore, look them up. You, you can, um, you'll find a whole list of them. But the key is, is that you're gonna add them at the beginning of one of the sentences. And so that means it changes it to a dependent clause. So you need the rest of the sentence. So let's look. I added even though at the beginning of this independent clause. Even though Alexis spends hours practicing short dances she finds online, she only records herself when she thinks they are perfect. Well, I have a little tip for you. If you add the conjunct subordinating conjunction at the beginning of the sentence, you will need to add a comma at the end of the clause. That's only if you add them at the beginning of the sentence. That's another language arts pro tip for you. If you don't add the comma here, it's wrong. But you will because you are a great language arts student. And that is it, my language arts friends. We got this. These are three options for you to correct your run on sentences. I hope, I hope this helps you and I hope you start adding some punctuation in between all those clauses and independent clauses so you don't turn in one long paragraph that's just one big sentence. But you got this. Keep working through this. And if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Bye.